As a founder of Melexis, Roland du Châtelet became a very successful Belgian businessman who turned his liberal progressive ideology into a political movement called Vivant. He's also the owner of a few soccer teams in Belgium and abroad, and one of them is the legendary Standard Liège. Today, he will share his ideas on the opportunities we see around us for innovation. Please give it all up for Mr. Roland Duchatelet. Uh, I don't know if these work here as well. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, dear friends, I want to talk about uh, the opportunities of innovation. And to do that, I, I want to go back in time, way back in time, uh, in periods uh, of the history of the world where nobody was really concerned about innovation. But it is nevertheless interesting to see how and which innovations came about a long, long time ago. A long time ago, uh, like a few, well, thousands, thousands of years ago, there was even no coin money. Interestingly, before coin money, credit existed. It was uh, typically done in stones or in wood, and there was a kind of credit system. Also very interesting is that taxes existed before coin money. The real emergence of coin money was in Greece about 600 years before Jesus Christ. And incidentally, at the same time, there was also the inception of democracy, also in Greece. Interestingly, also, in the early days of democracy, there were no political parties or anything of that kind, and there were not even elections. In the old Greece, people were elected to the assembly just by, uh, by pulling balls, basically. It's a random selection of the people, which is still the case in, uh, in the tribunal in Belgium of uh, the, when you have murders and this kind of things, you have also tribunals where they are just randomly chosen. Now, if you think about the disinnovation, money, coin money has been a fantastic innovation because, of course, it uh, was a possibility to avoid trades of uh, sorts of things. And you could, in fact, to some extent also uh, keep some money, some trading kind of uh, uh, pieces because, in fact, the money in itself didn't, doesn't have a value, but we recognized it had a value. And therefore, economy could develop, trade could develop, and it had a huge impact on the societies like the Greek and the Romans and so forth. Money was a very good innovation at the time, but uh, there were some other innovations also, like for example, the wheel was an innovation at that time. Uh, the boat was in fact a, a much longer innovation, it was not a very brave innovation because since wood is lighter than water, <laughs> automatically <laughs> wood would stay above water anyway. So. Uh, the experience and the, and the knowledge we have from these past ages is that there was totally no focus on innovation. And uh, there was, even like today, there were some forces to act against innovation sometime when it was uh, uh, creating trouble in an established system. The next big innovation in the world was uh, the possibility to reproduce books in a very simple way, in huge quantities, which uh, made it possible for people to share information. And that was uh, from starting from the year 1000 onwards. This innovation was very, very important because uh, the number of people at that time who could then start to use and exchange information was increasing. If you look back to those times, you will also find that the world was not very populated. Big cities like Paris and so had maybe 20, 30,000 inhabitants. Huh? And uh, uh, in the world, there were many 
found was very, this population in general was very small. Now, next to that innovation, the most important innovation was probably the invention of banks. Banks were a, a kind of history of uh, goldsmiths and so forth who started to keep money, uh, gold and silver for others, and then they started one day to think, well, maybe we can uh, borrow some, and then uh, maybe we don't need to cover everything which we have borrowed, and that was the beginning of the banking system. It was in the 18th century. This is interesting to know so that you are aware that many of the huge innovations are very recent. After that, we had the Industrial Revolution, which was basically the consequence of the invention of the motor, first steam motors, replacing the horsepower, the, horsepower, the power of, uh, of uh, different types of animals by mechanical force was a huge revolution also, and we see some examples here in, uh, in the sea mine of uh, how it worked. This revolution induced major changes in society, uh, in a sense that uh, many people moved from the land to cities, which means that on some occasions, the invention of a new thing also induces very important uh, changes in society, the way we live. Later on, in, when the Industrial Revolution did really take drip, we invented other sorts of uh, uh, motors and engines and so forth. We also invented electricity and these kind of things. But never ever in the history of the world there has been an invention which is more impacting than the time we live today. Since just a few decennies, huh, we have computers with a huge increase of prog productivity of everybody, which also are used in robots and so forth, with huge increase in productivity. And we have the internet now. The combination of this computing power with the internet is devastating for our society. Devastating. Nothing tomorrow will be the same as it was 10 years ago, as it was 20 years ago. I will give you a few examples. Banks. Formerly, we went to the bank and we got money and so forth, and we had an account, and then we had could have receipts of our account. Tomorrow, there are many new contenders to become the banks of tomorrow. Of course, the banks which we have now, they, have, they will have trouble. The main reason why there will be new contenders is that the way we pay will dramatically change. We will pay with our smartphone, and the smartphones will in the future be used both for identification and payments. This is a, an unbelievable revolution. And then the new players in that market will be companies like Google, of course, huh? and maybe some others, which uh, Google, by the way, they have created already banks in nearly every country in the world because they see this happening. And then you have the companies like uh, MasterCard. Will they get a chunk of the business in the future? Nobody knows. But they are under big stress today because their business model is maybe not appropriate. And then we have like retailers like Walmart and Carrefour and those, they have all fidelity cards. What's the difference of a fidelity card or a to, to, to another credit card. There's no difference anymore. So they may also be actors in the struggle for the banking uh, in, in the future. And uh, if you then look at the, the well, who could win the, the struggle, it's very hard to predict. And that's, of course, an area, if you're uh, uh, involved in, in innovation and research and so forth, if you want to know which area will dramatically change, well, the banking world will dramatically change. 
Who will win? I don't know. <laughs> but that's what researchers are for, huh? to find out. The other thing, which also came across in some of the presentations earlier, is that if you want to be active in innovation in those kind of se sectors, it's hugely difficult. Why? Because comparatively to, let's say, 50 years ago, the world counts maybe 2,000 times more engineers. Because 20 or 30 years ago, the world was just Western Europe and America. And we had some engineers over there, but the, China was not part of the world, Russia was not part of the world. Now the world is huge, India is there. The Philippines are now coming. And the most important thing, all these sciences, scientists communicate. I remember the time when scientists were very scary to communicate because I thought, well, maybe I have to first print my book and then bring it to the market to show that I'm the first. Now they are eager to be the first by uh, divulging it on the internet as quickly as they can. This means also that in innovations, which are dramatic, which are really changing the world, you have no chance as an engineer to win the battle because the battle will be a marketing and strategy battle, not a, techni a technical battle. And we had some examples earlier where some innovations failed. I had my part of that as well. Huh? I created a, a kind of a YouTube thing here in Belgium uh, in 2000, but it was simply too early and too small. It didn't work. So the question now is, what Will, what are the other uh, innovations? I will come to that. But first, I will uh, say something about the, the way society will evolve in the coming few, well, decennies. The way our society is organized today in Western Europe is based on uh, what has been done in 1950 just after the, after the Second World War, uh, World War. What happened, we installed a systems of social security. Initially, it were the unions who had these kind of uh, funds which uh, were used when you got retired and when you had children and so. And then later on in the 50s, it was kind of nationalized. The system we currently have is totally based on having work or at least having worked some, some time, or maybe also have been be married with somebody who has worked. However, if you look at the construction of this system, it makes me think to a house of 1950. A house of 1950, you try to imagine, imagine uh, maybe of your grandparents or so, how was the house then? It was uh, a house with uh, rooms where in typically in every room there was one light uh, to put on the light and there was one big room with a stove where in fact everything happened in the family to they heated the water up to do the, the, the dishes and everything and uh, that was a central part of the uh, the home and the toilet for example was uh, in the garden you had to go to the garden to go to the toilet, and then uh, uh, the walls, they were not very well isolated, and the humidity was coming up to the walls. And uh, so what happened in the years after that, and the same happened with our system of social security, we made some useful adaptations. For example, after a while, uh, we started to realize that the house well, doing everything in the kitchen is some, somewhere not so ideal. We created, uh, in the, well, the room with the stove, we created a kitchen. And maybe there was some room in the house where we could do that. If not, we did build a part, an annex to the house to organize the kitchen. And sometime later, we felt that it was not so private to have some, some heating of water in the, in, at the stove and then uh, taking your bath in the main room and so. Then the bathrooms came up, and eventually the toilets were connected to the sewage, sewage uh, system. Later on, 
electricity was developed more, so we fortified the electricity accesses when the refrigerators came and television came and so forth. And eventually we drilled also a hole to let the uh, cable television in. And some people also did put a double, uh, uh, double glass into the windows. But the windows are still very, very small by comparison to what you would build today. I tell this to visually explain to you that the society we know today is a society which has been built 60 years ago. It has been adapted a little bit. But if we would reinvent our society today, it would be like a new home we would think of very well isolated with big rooms, of course, uh, uh, internet everywhere and so forth. Why do I say this? Because uh, the motor of innovation for the near future will be the consequence of changes in our societal system. Today, if you look at the number of people who work in agriculture, industry, and the building industry, it's 8% of the population. So the sectors which are the productive sectors, according to Marx, hmm, it's only 8% of the population. Formerly, it was much more than that. So we cannot continue to organize our society the way we do. We have to reinvent our society. There is another interesting thing also, that the laws which we have currently, 97% of the laws have been written while internet didn't exist. So while normally an organization, any organization should adapt to this. So it means that we will face major changes in our society. Because today, what we see is that the income of the normal people is not increasing anymore. And it's, it's, we have a swollen system of uh, uh, public, uh, public uh, uh, organizations, which in fact eat all the productivity which has been created by innovation in this country, and in many countries in Europe as well. So I think we are going to have this big change. And what will this big change uh, I have as a consequence to some of the sectors where I expect huge innovation. I expect huge innovation in education. If you think about educa education today, in Belgium we have 400,000 people working in, in education. 400,000. This is, of course, a lot. <laughs> But moreover, if you look at the, the way education works, really there are uh, some, some teachers try to adapt to the, well, internet and so on. But it is basically to do education today, even the, the children don't have to go to school. They can do nearly everything from home if you would like to do that. So the problem is that in education today, the cost of education is so high that we need to do improvements. And I think there is no other way than to let entrepreneurs, to let innovators in uh, schools hmm, do their best to find new models. In Holland now, they start. In uh, America, they've been, they've been they started as well. So everywhere in the world, they start to do it in a different way. And it, if you want, of course, to do innovations with a company of uh, 400,000 people or 200,000 people, which is education today, huh? which is a kind of state company, huge state company, it will not work. You have to recreate the education system in Belgium, where, of course, education will be free as before, but where the production, the organization of education will go to private ent entrepreneurs, who will be paid, in fact, by the number of parents they can convince to follow them. The other sector which is also going to change dramatically is 
uh, the, the sector the, of the medical care and so on. Because that sector as well has been created as a byproduct of the industrial ex expansion. And now it's a kind of semi-communistic system whereby the state decides which hospital can get a scanner and which hospital cannot get a scanner. And at the same time, you have uh, uh, the possibility to choose your uh, hospital or to choose your uh, uh, doctor. But yet, there again, this system is not working well today. Moreover, what we see is that we have uh, very good doctors in general in this country. And there are already quite some people coming from abroad, from England, America, Indians, and so forth, who come for a treatment in this country. And now, are the doctors paid in that case? They're paid black. Because our system is not made up for this kind of thing, because of the way the system has been conceived is that it is a byproduct of when you work and you go to work, then you have the right to have an insurance and so forth. And it's not thought of exportation of services. It's not like that. So this uh, segment will be reinvented. Now, if you talk figures, education in Belgium, is like, uh, oh, like approximately 20 billion euros per year. Huge market, huge market with lots of room of innovation. And, uh, uh, and uh, hospitals, etc. is even more. Huh? Okay, I think that uh, it's important that we recognize this. There are a few other sectors also which will change in that respect. And uh, I think that uh, we have to be aware that the change of the society will lead to many opportunities of uh, innovation in the future. Where will they be? They will not be in products who will change the world. Because the products who will change the world, they will be, in, well, in any case, sold by <laughs> Google and Microsoft and Amazon.com and so forth. It's, uh, we're too small now for this kind of innovations. We will not have the success which some others had before in this country. The innovation will come in unexpected sectors, like the one I addressed already. And there is a lot of room. And the main advantage of those sectors is they are local. So there is little threat about international companies to come with some products, but they eventually they might come. Huh? So because some, some people are already thinking in that uh, process. So I hope that I could uh, enlighten you a little bit on uh, the future of innovation and uh, that when you want to innovate that you're not trying to re reinvent the wheel in the future, that you try to, do, to choose those segments where there are still big possibilities, but maybe not so, well, sexy as some others.